Hello, people of the World Wide Interweb. Today on the bench, we have a Charles Parker, which is a company that was founded in 1832. I'm still trying to figure out exactly what date this was manufactured. I'm, I'm guessing probably 20s, 30s, but that's just a, a wild guess. Uh, this thing is just massive, massive, massive. Look, this is a, this is a lighter, just, just so you can see this, the sheer size of this thing. And, Wait, there was no cheaping out on steel on this guy. Uh, I read that uh, it weighs roughly about 85 pounds. I don't want to put this on my scale because it'll probably break it. Um, the plan is to give this bad boy a uh, cleanup and make her pretty again. We are missing like a few little parts here and there. I'm missing a uh, screw over here that retains this... Uh, the Acme threads in place and I don't think I'm gonna get into removing these jaws they look like they're removable but in past experiences I've found that uh, this type of jaws is very difficult to remove and it's more trouble than it's worth better just keep them on and uh, keep it simple so let's get into it I love these old details. Look at that. Parker. Just, just beautiful. You know, they don't take time to cast things like that anymore. It's a, it's a shame. And uh, we can see the lettering on this side. Charles Parker Company. Meriden, Connecticut, I guess. And, uh, yeah. Beautiful. So I would imagine at this date and time when this was manufactured, this was probably not a hex. So what I'm going to do is turn this into a flathead uh, bolt and uh, it'll look a little bit more legitimate in there. So uh, yeah, we'll stick it in the drill press and try and round all of this over and then uh, cut a slot in it. We'll see how it goes.
Suction. Check. Honey Badger. Check. Let's get blasting.
So, to keep with the theme, I figured I will do black and white. So we'll get some white paint in there. And we'll do our usual trick where we grab a sawzall blade, really tape this really well to the sawzall blade, stick it in the sawzall, shake it up. So here we have the pieces all painted up and cleaned up. I would have liked to have uh, cleaned this, uh, this uh, I don't know what you would call this, the slide or the way a little bit more, but uh, it's got that patina look and uh, I think it'll look cool anyways. And uh, this, uh, the painted parts came out pretty good. And then there's that, uh, the screw that we made from a bolt, so that'll be a cool little detail and uh yeah i guess uh all all the bare metal pieces here you'll see me i'm gonna like just basically put a thin film of grease all over it to just uh prevent any rust from happening so let's get into it So that concludes the restoration on this vise, and I think it turned out beautiful. I really like this little detail right here, this casted in Parker right here, and this, uh, this screw turned out pretty good. I like that idea. Maybe I'll repeat that in the future video. A little details and make a big difference in my opinion. The devil is in the detail, as they say. You know, the casting here with, uh, with the white uh, embellishments, I guess. I'm pretty happy with the way it turned out. I uh, I really wish I didn't have to do any of that uh, Bondo work up here and under here where it was welded. I have no reasons to believe that it's going to break again under normal use. You know, no putting pipes on there and smashing it with a hammer and, you know, with cast. Yeah, you never can be too careful. You know, once you got a lot of, a lot of stress on the vise and then you smash it with a hammer, that's when you break vices. I mean, that's how I've broken a few. But under normal use, 
this thing shouldn't break again. We will give it a stress test just to make sure, but uh, I think this thing is ready for service and ready for another hundred years of uh, use. So for those of you who stuck it out to the end, I appreciate you watching and I hope you have a great day and uh, maybe we'll see you on the next one. Cheers and thank you for watching.